Welcome back. Finally got a torch to review. It's the RRT M2S. This was sent in via Jetbeam. Bit different to my normal torches. This one is a LEP torch, which is a laser excited phosphor one. So as per usual, I'm going to go over my normal unboxing, show you what's included. This does come with an aluminium case. It's quite a nice one. The black parts on the sides of the corners, they are actually plastic. I'll just open it up and show you what's inside. All of the accessories are there and we have a strap at the top there with elasticated on it so you can put things in there, documentation. You'll notice there's a different size cutout. That's because Jetbeam does have another model. Um, I haven't looked at that. That's a more powerful LEP torch. Spare cap for the switch and two spare O-rings. Also included is a micro to type A plug USB cable. They have their own branded wrist strap, very similar to the other ones with the adjuster. And now we're going to move on to looking at the torch up close. Size wise, this is pretty similar to the other 21700 torches I've looked at. They have, however, done a few changes on the magnetic control ring or switch. This now has quite a nice knurling pattern on it, just makes it a bit easier to grip. Tactical ring is a hard sort of rubber or silicone material, and that's already pre installed. And there's your switch at the base. Note the hole there so you can put the wrist strap through. There's no holster with this, it's just the box and you don't get a clip. Perhaps that would have been nice to have seen. We'll take a look at the battery now. This is one of the fairly standard jet beams that I've looked at. JR51 rated to 5100 milliamp hour. And you can see there's your micro USB charging port. Would have been nice to have had the type C on this particular one. Give you a tour around the other parts now. It's fairly thick material on this. Inside there's the gold contact spring. And just to demonstrate, I have used this with the unprotected cells. The flat top batteries didn't have any problems at all. You can also use 18650s with this particular torch. If you want to, you can get at the head section. You can just unscrew that, although it's quite a long thread. And that's why we've got two different size O-rings. Here's a close up on the front. That is glass. We can't see anything in that, obviously, because it's a LEP. It's not an LED as such. So what I'm going to do now is move on to the user interface. It's half press on the power switch. That's your momentary full press on and off. If you rotate the rotary switch fully left, that's your lowest output. Then all you need to do is rotate one click right for the medium and another click for the high level. The magnetic ring on this is quite firm, so you're not going to skip through by accident. And then you just do another click for your strobe. The next one is the SOS. Nice and simple UI on this torch. I don't think anyone's going to be unhappy. However, again, I would have liked some markings on there just to let you know which mode you are in. The USB charging with this torch is on the slow side, doesn't get much over 750 milliamps. Here's the user guide. Couple of points to note though. And the first one is that you do have a step down on this torch. Next up, we've got the beam shots, Unicorn, usual standard torch that I use, 850 lumens. Moving on to the jet beam, you can see how completely different this is. A very focused beam pattern on a LEP torch. This is the first LEP torch that I've looked at. So it's difficult for me to compare to other ones because I haven't actually used any. So with that in mind, I'm going to show you as many beam shots as I can. But what I've done is instead of doing the wide angle ones that I normally do, I'm going to do much closer ones so that you'll be able to see just how the beam pattern is on this torch and some longer range shots as well. Here we are zoomed in on the front of the shed and as soon as I switch over to the jet beam you can see there's a spotlight with virtually no spill at all on the outside. As far as the beam pattern goes it does spread out at longer distances but nowhere near as much as a normal LED torch would. On the practical side if you were walking through say a woods or something you're not really going to see anything in front of you or to the side so it's a really a specialist sort of torch for people who want that extra long range. You'll notice that when I shine it on something like a plant or a wall, that the light actually bounces off of that and illuminates around it. But it is quite fun to use. You get that lightsaber effect if you're into that. And you can also, at much lower power output, get a much longer range than you would do out of a normal torch. I'll carry on now with my beam shots, so do have a look through those. I've done some longer distance ones for you, and I'll give you a few thoughts of mine at the end.
as I haven't looked at any LEP torches before, it's very difficult for me to compare it to anything else. There are a couple of things to note. I mentioned about the battery. That's one area which I think could be improved. Another point about these LEP torches is they're on the pricey side. That has to be said, the ones that I've looked at. With that in mind, I'd be interested to hear what you think of this. If you've used other LEP torches, anything that you think could be improved or areas that you do like with this particular model that I've shown you.